Microsoft released so many new AI features, products, and softwares that is, it's, it's hard to keep up with. So give me about five minutes and I'm going to give you the five things that I think you need to know uh, about Microsoft Copilot Plus and everything new that just came out of the Microsoft Build Conference. All right, before we jump into it real quick, if you didn't know, uh, my name is Jordan Wilson. This is our AI in five. So we help everyday people like you and me learn and leverage generative AI to grow their companies, grow their careers. If that's you, please subscribe to this uh, channel, like, leave me a comment, and also go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for the free daily newsletter. All right, so let's quickly recap five things that you need to know from Microsoft's uh, build conference. So it is in the middle of it right now. We are in day two of day three, but presumably everything big has already been announced and there's been dozens of new products, features, uh, you, you know, and AI capabilities in Copilot that we didn't have, you know, three days ago. So we're going to quickly, I'm going to go over what I think are the five most important. So, uh, here we go. So number five, Microsoft is going edge so not just its browser but they are going edge ai so bringing copilot plus pc to the browser so or, or sorry to the device so what that means is previously when we interact with a generative ai system like copilot like chat gpt like gemini it's all done to the cloud so we send information to the cloud the cloud computes it you know in the the large language model computes it in the cloud and then sends the information back to us so with this new copilot plus pc line of products it will be running gpt4 locally uh, which is a game changer in terms of what we can do uh, in, in terms of more privacy, more speed, and just a more seamless experience. Uh, so the Copilot Plus PC, most of them are going to be coming out June 18th. So you can't just throw this on any old PC. Uh, it's only the, the newest, the latest, and the greatest, and the most powerful that will be able to run uh, Copilot features locally. Um, and that's through this NPU, this neural processing unit. Uh, so essentially Microsoft is combining a traditional CPU, a GPU, and an NPU to essentially run all of this AI locally. And obviously with Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, GPT-4.0 uh, is, is going to be powering, it looks like a lot of these future features. All right, the number four thing, I think Microsoft is going to change how we work with recall. So think of recall like this how you have an internet browsing history and you can go back and say, oh, what was that web page I looked at three days ago? I forgot what it was, but I need to recall it. That's what this new recall feature is, but across its entire suite of products. So we don't know if it'll be available as an example, if you are, you know, on Google Chrome or something like that. But assuming that, you know, whether you're using Microsoft Teams, Excel, uh, or their browser, Microsoft Edge, it literally, you have an entire history that you can scrub through, but also chat with. So if there was that certain thing from, you know, two weeks ago that you can't remember, it, it is semantic search. So it doesn't have to match exactly. So maybe it's a transcript uh, in a Teams meeting. Maybe it's something that you were working on inside of a PowerPoint. Maybe it's a document uh, that you created in Microsoft Word. You literally just go into recall, you search for it. It uses uh, semantic analysis in the context of everything else. And it brings up relevant things that you were searching for and you can scrub through it as well. I think this is going to change how we work. I think we're going to go into this more uh, passive mode and thinking hopefully more creatively and strategically, and then working in a breadcrumbing or bookmarking type of way where we just kind of jot down notes to ourselves that we can go recall later. Um, and I think people are either going to completely check out and really leverage this feature and become just lazier at their job. Or I think people are really going to start using this in a strategic way to grow their companies and careers. All right, number three, I think Copilot is way more personal and powerful now. Uh, so let's just watch a very quick example here. So um, I'm just going to share this real quick. So this is, um, we're going to watch about 30 seconds of it. This is from the Microsoft Build uh, keynote where essentially someone is granting Copilot access to Minecraft. So let's watch this for about 30 seconds here. While he was playing Minecraft. Now what you're going to see here is two voices. The first will be Ryan, the second will be Copilot. And he's going to be having a natural conversation like he would with a friend while he plays. Let's watch this experience. Hey, Copilot, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. And it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft. Ready to build, explore, and maybe dive a few mobs? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. My son plays this game all the time, and I have no idea what I'm doing. No worries. I'm here to help you impress your son. I see you've got a crafting table in front of you, which is a great start. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. 
Yeah. Uh, do I have what I need? Let's see. You've got some sticks. Perfect for the sword's handle. But it looks like you're missing the material for the blade. You can use wood, stone, iron, gold, or diamond. All right, let's pause it there for a second. All right, so pretty Im pretty impressive there, right? So uh, the ability in Copilot, and this was you know a fun example, but it can see by using the GPT-4 O technology from OpenAI, it can see, process, and you can interact with it in real time. So let's just say as an example, imagine clicking with one click and giving Copilot access to whatever you're working on. Minecraft, sure, but whether you're browsing the web, you're reading a long PDF, uh, you're, you're trying to decode some... Uh, or debug some code that you're working on, or maybe create a, a presentation in PowerPoint. Imagine just going into Copilot, one click, and then talking to it, and it can see and interact with whatever you're working on in real time. Pretty impressive. Number two thing that you need to know from Microsoft Build, Microsoft may bring us our first mainstream AI agents. So Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella essentially walked through the Copilot stack. So he said there's personal, there's team, and there's agents. So in Copilot Studio, you can essentially build customized versions of Copilot and then give them agent capabilities to where they can actually actually carry out tasks for you that you train them on. If you give them access uh, to the data and to the programs in order to do this, to do that, as well as co-pilot teams. So think of this, uh, you know, where essentially think of it as a virtual teammate where you can literally assign them to a seat. You can have them, you know, kind of uh, attend meetings, give them tasks uh, to complete, et cetera. Uh, but bring in this kind of co-pilot teams, whereas before it was just really a personal assistant, but now it can be shared across teams. Uh, and now we have this kind of AI agent workflow. And then last but not least, it's just a hot take. I think Microsoft is fighting the wrong battle, if I'm being honest. They spent so much time in their Microsoft Build conference, and I think so much of the attention has been paid to how their Surface laptop, this new Copilot Plus PC, is better than the MacBook Air. I think that's the wrong battle. Why are they doing that? Um, I think Microsoft should be paying more attention on breaking up the Apple or the Mac ecosphere. Uh, you, you know, people who, you know, are addicted to their iPhones or just, you know, to having that seamless sharing experience across multiple Apple devices. Microsoft should be paying more attention, more marketing money uh, to kind of win some of that market share. Comparing their Surface laptop to the MacBook Air I think is a, a, a moot point. Of course, right now the Surface laptop is faster, it's more powerful, and even you know MacBook. Uh, and we've heard that Apple is going to be announcing their partnership with OpenAI in June at WWDC conference. So best case, there I don't know a couple quarters or a year or so where Microsoft is right now with OpenAI because they've had this ingrained partnership with them for multiple years. So I don't know why Microsoft is spending so much time uh, trying to compare themselves to MacBook. So that is it. That is a very quick recap of the five things that you need to know from the Microsoft Build conference and at least the AI features. If this was helpful, I hope it is. Let me know here. Please subscribe to this channel. Also, go to youreverydayai.com. Sign up for our free daily newsletter. We do these AI and fives almost every single day, breaking down tips, tutorials, tricks to help you better leverage generative AI to grow your company and career. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you back for another AI and five. Thanks, y'all.